the Billboard Hot 100 uh, is the most famous register of popular music in America. It's been uh, registering the 100 most popular songs in the US every week since 1958. Um, but for a long time, most people don't know this, the Billboard Hot 100 was essentially lying to you. It was a register of lies. And the reason why is that it relied on two sources of information. First, they would survey radio DJs. And second, they would ask record store owners what's selling. The problem with this strategy is that the DJs were often being paid directly by the labels. So what you were hearing was essentially a game of telephone from the labels when you asked the DJs what was popular. And when you talked to the record store owners, they had reason to lie too. Because when music was a scarce resource, when it wasn't digitized and it was just vinyl records that you had to store, if you had sold out of ACDC, there was no incentive for the record store owner to say that ACDC was selling well because they had nothing left to sell. So instead, they would say that something that they still had some, record, uh, some records of was popular, say Def Leppard or Bruce Springsteen. So not only was uh, the Billboard Hot 100 biased toward the label's tastes, it was also biased toward churn. Faster, uh, so, so the song would hit number one and it would fall right off. Um, in 1991, Billboard ditched this honor system, and they changed the, bill, they, they changed the way that they measured the charts. First, they measured uh, airplay using sound scan, and second, they registered point of sales data at record stores so that the record store owners couldn't lie to Billboard. And almost immediately, almost overnight, literally within the next month, two incredibly important things changed in American music taste. First, music taste became a lot more repetitive. When you looked at what people were actually buying rather than what record stores were telling people to buy, uh, it turned out that people just wanted to hear the same songs over and over and over again. The 20 songs that have been on the Billboard Hot 100 for the longest period of time all came out after 1991. It's not because the music got better. It's because the methodology changed. Second, rock collapsed on the charts after the 19, in the early 1990s, and two other genres soared up the charts. You can probably guess what at least one of them are, maybe both. They are hip hop and country, both genres preferred by lower class, lower income citizens whose tastes might not have been reflected by the white men in the suits on the coast. Their favorite kind of music, rock, faded. The people's favorite kind of music, country and hip hop, soared. And hip hop remains today the dominant genre of music. In sum, taste in music used to be dictated top to bottom from the taste makers through scarce distribution channels to the public. And now tastes are much more likely to bubble up, bottom up. Um, so in many ways, what we saw in music, I think, is happening in lots of other markets. We are used to, in all of these industries, taste being dictated by a handful of elites through scarce distribution channels to the public. And now, tastes in markets are much more chaotic, much harder to predict, because they are bubbling up and they are harder to control.